Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be talking about Kubernetes troubleshooting made easier using Robusta with some of the issues and, and stuff. Uh, this video is brought to you by uh, all the members, Armo, Commodore, Avesha, Sysdig, Speedscale, Slimia, and Teleport. And a huge shout out to Robusta as well, who have been a long time supporter of my YouTube channel and my open source work. So Kubernetes troubleshooting should be easy and there should be tools making things easier for you like getting the notifications. So anything that goes wrong, you should be notified and you should be able to take actions from within that itself. Giving you the right information over the period of time and what issue happened over that period of time and extending those to all the aspects within Kubernetes. I think that's what exactly Robusta is trying to solve. And we'll be going through some of the um, scenarios, but Obviously, things has to move in a direction where it becomes simpler for uh, SRE or anybody who is, you know, managing the clusters to troubleshoot their clusters easily. So let's dive into Robusta right away. So I have a Kubernetes cluster already created and it should not have any pods running. I mean, uh, apart from the system pods and whatever is required to run Kubernetes. So now this is the Robusta homepage and it says that it's open source platform for multi-cluster Kubernetes monitoring, troubleshooting and automation. Uh, and that's what we are going to explore. Before exploring, let's go through its installation steps. So you can see that it has a few terminologies like sources and in cluster Robusta is running and then your destinations where your, all your notifications is going. So sources can be Kubernetes, Prometheus, and then syncs can be you know Telegram, Discord, Teams, uh, Slack, and Robusta UI, which we'll definitely be doing. So to configure Robusta, first you have to have the Robusta CLI. Somehow it says you need to have a CLI as pip install and not as a binary. So you kind of have to do it. I already have that. Uh, then the generate config. Uh, let's kind of quickly generate the config. Robusta gen config. Name of the cluster is Robusta. So yeah. Local cluster, no. Slack integration, yes. Add to Slack, give it permission. It's done. Slack channel to connect. Robusta demo. No. Robusta UI, yes. Let's log in. Choose your account name. Successfully registered. So now Robusta can use uh, Prometheus as an alert resource. Uh, so I don't have Robusta installed. Uh, sorry, I don't have Prometheus installed. So I think that would be very good if we can install Prometheus as well onto Kubernetes cluster. And I think their Prometheus is kind of a lightweight stuff with all the cool settings which are required to get the right set of alerts. So I'll just click yes and yes. So this is saved configuration. Now what we'll do is we'll be finishing the Helm install. So let's go back to the installation and we'll do Helm repo add update. And then from the generated values YAML, we'll be installing that. You can see the configuration was generated values.yaml. So let's do the install onto this particular Kubernetes cluster. So after some time, you can see that Robusta is successfully installed and we can go actually to the UI and check all the stuff. Uh, and we can also see kubectl get pods hyphen A. So we can see the, the Prometheus have been set up, alert manager have been set up, the queue state metrics, uh, the Grafana Robusta runner, which will be, I think, sending uh, the traffic to Robusta and the node exporter, the forwarder, I think that sends uh, to Robusta. So all these fancy stuff uh, is, is being installed and getting ready. We'll be going through some of the scenarios today that often occurs, like the pending pods. We, when, whenever there is something which is pending with respect to like image given wrong or node not ready or nodes not enough space. So let's try that first uh, once our whole setup is complete. So let's go to the UI first. So platform.robusta.dev is the UI. And we have logged in. 
and our this is our Rob Siam Robusta demo that we have created. So you can see uh, it it already gives you a fancy dashboard. So it has all your workloads. So I think good work on the UI over there. Then they have a timeline. So I think timeline gives a view where you can actually see what went wrong and for how much duration things were things were wrong. So I think that's that's very fancy uh, feature. Nodes uh, gives you the, I think, live status of the nodes and you can see the CPU memory, all these stats over here. And you can, I think, click on that as well to see um, the IPs, uh, some of the labels and, and stuff. I think, I don't know why these are not getting updated, but they should be. And health is new and fancy. So Robusta Siam, it says that there are zero unhealthy apps and they are based on the Prometheus alerts, which Robusta configures automatically because we have installed Robusta own Prometheus, uh, you know, uh, set. Cool. So let's try out the pending pods. It just gives, I think, yeah, it, it gives a fake, you know, node selector. So let's deploy this kubectl plus-f pending pods. It is created kubectl get pods and it's pending. So the example pod is pending. Let's go back to the UI and let's see. Okay, it doesn't auto refresh. So now something came up example pod and it says it has one issue. So we can go over there. And we can check failed scheduling warning for the example pod. So, and we can click on that. We can get even more information. What happens? Like zero out of three nodes are available based on the affinity or selector. So, whatever selector we have given, it is not uh, giving those. So, I think that's that's pretty neat. Let's try out another example. Maybe crash pod. So, this is the crash pod deployment. Let's deploy this. Pod is created. This pod is working fine. Now we'll break it. So, which is broken one. So, we'll apply the broken pod. You can see kubectl apply hyphen f this. It should go to crash loop back off. Yes, you can see that. Now let's go back to the UI and just do this, this so that it appears. And you can see one issue, which is crash loop back off and the priority is high, it is crashing. And let's go to the Slack. You can see in the Slack as well, high priority crashing. Uh, the crash loop back off is there and you can see the message as well that environment variable deploy ENV is undefined and restart count and we can also go to investigate and it directly opens uh, that particular app where we actually were and you can see the series of events that are happening on the timeline so you can just drag scroll the timeline and zoom in as well on the timeline and if you go to the pod view you can always see uh, that you know what what was happening with respect to the pod it is running it is crash loop back in backing it is running it is uh, crash loop backing so that's how simple it is like you are getting some issue you created actually some issue and you are directly getting that into your slack as well so that's the power of notifications that i was telling like like you are doing your work and suddenly something happens within your cluster or within the no, uh, namespace uh, let's say you have a production namespace and anything that goes wrong in that namespace, you are getting that alert over here. Um, so you will be immediately, uh, you know, prioritizing your work with respect to your applications. Now in the next scenario, what I have done is I have created a memory pressure pod uh, in the memory uh, pressure namespace. So I create the namespace, then I create this stress pod and I want this to only live and run on one particular node. Uh, so it will create some sort of issues, uh, obviously, because... And I have all not given 10, I have scaled that to 40 replicas. So after deploying this particular application uh, and waiting for some time, I have created a scenario where now we are have we are seeing node not ready. And if we go to the apps, 
we go to the destroy i do not see any um, node not ready kind of scenario which is which is kind of odd uh, and even if i go to pods i am not able to fetch the pods so this is something maybe let's check if we have anything on the slack so on the slack we yeah we also got the pod not ready status for the in initial one that we got after 15 minutes so that is good uh, and we can silence these directly from here and we can i think it creates a new silence and we can create it uh maybe 8 hours silence it this is nice so queue pod not ready and we have silenced one alert now after some time once we come back and uh, uh, we are able to see that robusta did send us the alert of uh, one or more targets unreachable and d1 set rollout is stuck node is unreachable node is not ready which means it did pick up the node not ready scenarios node not ready scenarios are always tricky uh, so there might be some of the components of robusta itself running on that node which might have led to delay in sending some traffic and then uh, getting back it. So I have put everything in a different namespace now uh, on a different node, which is which are healthy. And then we were able to see new set of notifications with respect to node unreachable and stuff like that. And also uh, when we talk about cluster auto scaling and stuff, uh, it makes sense uh, when nodes keep coming and going, it, it has to be done in a, in a clever manner so these kind of alerts of node not ready should not always appear but if there is serious stuff going on in that node then it should appear so it's always tricky so uh, we can actually try a couple of more scenarios uh, so let's try the cpu throttling um, so if we view this so we can see that in the request and the limits we have given only 10 uh, but we are actually in the command uh, saying 100 so let's apply this kubectl apply hyphen f throttling kubectl get pods kubectl get pods you can see the cpu eater pod is there now let's go back to the ui uh, so we can see CPU eater is there and uh, you can see the info event has been captured. If we click here, if we click this, uh, the 100% throttling of CPU has been captured. If you go back to uh, the Slack, you can see info uh, elevated CPU throttling and we can see more results which are over here. Now let's go back and create another scenario. Uh, this scenario is the OM killed. Uh, so this is another scenario, very common one. Uh, this is the YAML file job spec to replicate it. So let's do kubectl apply hyphen f om kill demo. It is created. kubectl get pods. And we can see that the om kill uh, job three pod has started. And we can see that uh, this pod has now gone into om killed. On the Slack, we can see that there's a high alert which is created for om and the fancy part is that it also gives uh, some graphs which is captured so you can see the utilizations uh, and how it elevated and you know uh, went ahead with respect to the memory so that's the memory eater one so it it ate all the memory so that's nice it captured the om kill let's go back to the ui and see the timeline so we can see uh, when the om one appeared so that's the event stream and we can see the details for that as well. So pod OM killed, uh, both the graphs that were sent over the Slack. So you can see we covered different scenarios in this, like, you know, pod not ready, node not ready, uh, the CPU throttling one, OM killed, some different real use cases that actually occur day in, day out. Um, and Robusta has proved to give right set of alerting on top of that. Uh, Yes, there is some improvisation needed with respect to node not ready. But again, that depends when there are large scale clusters, you cannot give the notification always. But when there are actually for small, small scale clusters, uh, it has to be taken care. Uh, so I think, yeah, there is work that needs to be done. But 
I would say Robusta is moving in the right direction, giving the right set of alerting and in the many things which are there. Uh, just I would like to highlight a few more things. Let me share back again. So there are automation, some automations as well that can be done. Like, for example, uh, if you add to your volumes uh, that you want a trigger on deployments update. So basically any changes in your replicas should be notified to you. So you can create such automations uh, and whenever you, uh, you know, scale your deployment, it will be giving you an update or a Slack channel alert like this, that spec was updated. You know, there can be multiple use cases like this. There is any field which is there in a particular Kubernetes object that you want to monitor in production. Anything changes to that, you want an alert on it. You can do that with, with Robusta. You can also do custom uh, automations uh, as well. So for that, you need to write an action. So you can do a more customized automation based on writing your own action. Need to write that as of now in Python uh, and, and, you know, create that local playbook. So basically uh, that is called the custom playbook. So there are built-in playbooks. Now you are creating your own custom playbook. So even that is possible. So that also uh, is the power that Robusta gives you. I'm sure they might be looking to, you know, extend it to other languages as well. That can be a very interesting uh, thing. And also, uh, I would like to see more of the CRDs, how their alerting can be captured or their alerting mechanism can be enhanced. So all in all, Robusta, in my opinion, is on the right track. They are doing the right set of enrichments and they allow you to create a lot of uh, enrichments, automations on top of the defaults which they provide out of the box. Uh, I really like their Prometheus stuff. So I, I, I think if we are able to install lightweight Prometheus version with all the fancy Grafana dashboards, which are actually needed as a separate entity, even if Robusta is not there, that can also be very cool. So I think that can, that is another thing that that is only my choice kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and Nathan and uh, team um, is doing a great work in listening to the community. So do join their uh, you know, GitHub discussions, raise the issues, participate in contributing. Um, Nathan has been a long time supporter of my YouTube channel and my open source work. So big shout out to Nathan and also a big shout out to all the other members, Armo, Commodore, Avesha, Sysdex, Speed, Scale, Slim AI and Teleport. Um, I mean, I really like when, when uh, good organizations, they are supporting the people who are in open source. So I also love to support these who, who live by the values of the community. So try Robusta out and let me know what you feel about this particular tool and does it really help in your Kubernetes troubleshooting. Uh, I will be looking more into what all stuff we can silence and what all stuff can actually make real sense or can be automated. So I'll be again uh, checking a few of, few of my workflows and use cases and give them uh, to Nathan and see how we can work together on uh, the scenarios which can be common to other people as well. Uh, you can do the same. Uh, tag Robusta myself and let me know if you tried Robusta and how did you feel uh, about the tool of open source tool and also be one of the contributors. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, once again, uh, thanks to all the members and to Nathan and Robusta uh, and make sure to check them out. If you like the video, do all the needful stuff of liking it, subscribing it, pressing the bell icon, sharing with, you, with your friends so that they do not miss any new good tools that are solving the actual problems that you can see on my channel. Uh, also, make sure to check out Cube Simplify Workshops. They are the best in class. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.